Have you ever, like I have, looked at your folder and file system over in Lightroom and just about pulled your hair out, changing it over the years over and over again? Or do you have stuff scattered all over all different hard drives, thumb drives and everything, and you want to group it together? Or even more importantly, is this your first time putting a file system together? Well, I'm going to show you a great way to do this. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome. I'm Rusty Nelson. Welcome to the gallery here in Kent Square, PA. I always say that if you're ever in the area, please stop by, knock on the door. If I'm not out shooting, I'll be here. Uh, I love to talk photography. Anyway, what we're going to do today, let me jump back a little bit. I used to teach Lightroom and one of the biggest problems people had when they first started out or even a couple years down the road was they had these images scattered all over the place not a great way to be with Lightroom. And their folder system that they had started maybe after a year or so was absolutely chaotic. Well, I would like to do a video, a longer video of my whole digital process and management. But what I realized was it may be better to do this video and go ahead and start out and show you an easy way to get everything gathered up and herd up all your images and go ahead and get started in a very organized way. So if you would, please do me a favor if you'd like to get notified about further videos along these lines of my own personal ways of doing things, go ahead and follow the little guy below and go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell so you'll get notified further of them. Don't forget the bell and please at least just give it a thumbs up. It all helps out. Comments down below. If you've got questions, go ahead and put them down below. If I can't answer them, maybe somebody else will answer them. Anyway, let's move on. All right, to start this out, I want to talk a little bit about me, some of my philosophies, because creating a file or folder system in Lightroom is pretty personal. You know, like, do you line your socks up a certain way? Do you fold your underwear? That kind of thing. The way I developed this and the reason it came about was I, I, I'm a guide storm chasing. And when I was out by myself doing a lot of images, it was run and gun, moving along all the time. And I just needed some way to ingest things really quick into Lightroom, create a file and folder system where I didn't mess around with too much. So that's one thing to keep in mind. I don't, I, I'm lazy, I guess. Let's call me lazy. And I don't want to create a bunch of files and folders for cats and dogs and birthdays and everything else. But I'm going to show you a way that Lightroom does that automatically for you down the road, especially once I do the longer version of this. So make sure you subscribe. One other thing, too, is that you're going to need to do this. You're going to need a hard drive that's going to hold all your images. Now, the reason I say that is we're going to transfer eventually all your images onto a hard drive. You don't have to do this. You can do it on an internal drive that you're not going to move. But I highly suggest that you use an external hard drive that you can put away. So what we're going to do is take all of your images, we're going to put them on a hard drive, and when we're done with it, we're gonna go put that away. And I actually have that. I have them stored in a safe deposit box, and I just put them away, and that's where they sit. Also, I don't want you to think I'm also backed up into the cloud. I use, well, I'll explain what I use later in a different video, but anyway, so I really don't wanna lose my images. So those are some those are some theory things to think about as you go along. The other last thing is remember Lightroom is really flexible. So if you're somebody that thinks you have a different way to do it, go ahead and do it. That's great. In fact, put it in the comments down below. Love to hear about it, but explain the reason for it and explain why it's not as much work to do it that way. Because if I can find a more efficient way to do it and an easy way to find my images down the road, I'll do it. So here we go. First thing I'm gonna do is jump over to just a blank piece of paper and draw this out for you on uh, Photoshop. So let's go ahead and jump over there right now. Here we go, the magic 
Photoshop drawing board. And I apologize ahead of time because my drawing isn't that great, but hopefully you'll get the idea of where we're going with this. So we'll go ahead and draw it out and we'll go ahead and actually do it. Here we go. Let's get me off of here. All right, I work on a PC, but it doesn't make any difference whether you're a Mac or a PC. And on there, you may have a hard drive, you may have two hard drives, and you got images, they're all different folders and files, and the images are scattered all over the place. Maybe you got pictures of baby pictures are unhappy. You also maybe an external drive that's got pics on it someplace, and you may they may be old pics that you did before for some reason and maybe even a like I said my drawing is horrible uh, an old thumb drive somewhere what we're going to do is take one external drive and what I want you to do is take all of the images all every image don't separate out the image of if it's in a folder bring over the folder if the thumb drive has folders on it, bring over the folders with the images on it. And I want you to put all of these images into one folder, whether they're in files or not. And we're going to call this folder, and this is the way you'll label it, one, moving van. All right, so the one separate. And you'll see why we use that one a little later. Create all of these images and put them on this drive. Or if you're doing it on a hard drive inside of your PC, just create a folder with all the images and call it one moving van. Now, here's the thing. Personally, I would not move the images. When you bring them over here, copy them. Open it up. Make sure all the images are there. And the reason I say don't delete them is because we want to make sure that you're always keeping your images. And after everything's done and gone and put in here, and we're sure we got it working in Lightroom, then you can go ahead and you can get rid of these or just go store them someplace. Because when we're all done, all of these images in this folder right here in the moving van are going to be on whatever permanent drive you use to keep your Lightroom images. Now, let's go and do it for real. I thought it would be a good idea before we actually jump into do, doing this is show you this is a mock-up uh, catalog I have and actually most of the images are mine and this is literally except a lot more images this is what my catalog looks like and I thought I'd show that to you to try to get an idea of what it's going to look like in the end now you may look over here on the left and say well that's just divided up into years but that could be furthest from the truth because it's divided up into years for one reason down the road and that is because eventually i take these years off of here to reduce the size of my catalog you can see 12 through 14 projects because in each year I have what I call projects. Now, a project to me is something that I'm going to print, or it is maybe a book I'm working on. And eventually, those images will probably move back up into the main all images. Because if I hit on 2019 all images, you're going to see all of the images that are in 2019, whereas the projects are nothing more than an image that I'm going to print. Now here's an example right here. And this is the actual thumbnails to those images. Red for me means a master. And once I create that master, I never ever touch it again. Now I'll explain this all in the longer video, so make sure you subscribe for that. If it's green, it's a print. That means I've taken that image and I've sent it over to be printed 
over in QImage, which is a software program that I use to print. It just makes my life much easier. Uh, there's actually a discount, uh, probably still, if they're offering, it'll be down below. I'm not really sure, but that's not what this is about. And this is basically what your system will look like afterwards if you adopt part or all of this. Now, there's a few other ones down here, but they're always there. These are my calibration images. I keep them separate. And then I also have a folder that I call test. Now, the reason I say test is because I don't know about you guys, but I've done a lot of times where I play around with images and I goof around with them. And if it's in the test folder, that means I can get rid of it. So these are all just images at one time where I was doing this. I did some testing over some Canon stuff and, you know, they're just test images. That's it. And anytime it says test, I can get rid of it. Underneath this is gallery, and these are just templates that I use for images that I have in the gallery. So let's go ahead and create this new catalog. Now, I don't have a catalog, so a new one, so I have to go in and create it. We'll go up here to file, new catalog. When you create and make this catalog, this is where you're going to put your final catalog. Mine is on my C drive, so uh, I have an SSD drive and it runs really fast and my actual catalog, the catalog itself and the file and all of the, the contents barring the images are stored on my C drive separated from my images. Now, when you name this catalog, if you're doing it for the first time, don't call it Lightroom. Call it something else. Call it, and I usually call it something like uh, Lightroom Master Cat. And I am just going to show you what I mean. If I put test on the end, that means I can always get rid of it. So I never use the word test unless I'm able to get rid of it. Now we've created a brand new catalog. And if you look up in the top left hand corner, make sure that you're in that Lightroom Master Cat Test. And if you notice, there's absolutely no folders or files. The only collections that are there are a few of these smart collections, and that's it. So we're starting from the very beginning. Now, for a quick review so that we're all caught up, what we've done is created a new catalog, or maybe it's your first catalog, or we've created a new catalog. And I bring this over here, and we call that Lightroom Master Cat and Test, remember, because test I can always get rid of. So that's wherever your catalog is going to live. For me, originally, and now it's on my C drive. Then we've also taken and gone out and made copies of all of our images and put them on an external drive, which we called One Moving Van. So here's the theory, is that we now have a copy. This is a great backup copy. We still have all the other images because we just made copies of them and put them in the moving van. That's where we are right now. Now what we're going to do is wherever you want your final set of images to live. This is where we're going to start fresh. We're going to put one folder with all of our images in that eventually. We're going to start that by calling it something, whatever you want to call it that makes sense to you. Just don't call it Lightroom. And I'll tell you what I called mine first because I had made so many variations playing around with it. I called it all Lightroom images go here dummy. And I'm just going to leave it that way. Now you can call it whatever you want even as simple even as simple as all images go here master images folder whatever you need to do to let you know that that is the only place that images are going to go then what we're going to do is make a copy we're going to copy the moving van and we're going to simply place it 
that copy of the moving van inside of all images go here. Now we're all on the same page. So in essence, right now, we have three copies of our images. Like I said, we're never going to leave ourselves where we're vulnerable to deleting our images. So we have one on our external drive. We've made a copy of that and put it into whatever you called that, images go here dummy. And we still have those scattered out images wherever you pulled them from originally. Now, disconnect that copy. And now we're going to start bringing it into Lightroom. But I need you to follow these steps so that we get the folder structure as we do it. All right, now here we go for the fun stuff. We're back in our catalog that we made. Our Lightroom catalog, which has absolutely no folders in it. Go over to the folders, and we're going to simply add a folder. Now remember, bring these over here. We have our master catalog that we made, which we're in right now, Lightroom master catalog and all images go here dummy okay now they're sitting wherever you've decided they could be on a raid a dobro they could be on the exact same uh hard drive as the as your catalog however you've done that add and we're going to say path uh folder in path and add folder and you're going to go find that um folder all images go dummy, all images go dummy, all Lightroom images go here dummy. And that is the folder that we're going to select to add. And there it goes. Now, the cool part about this is, the only thing you have left to do, add. So we wanna be on add up here. You wanna make sure you're add, you're not gonna copy because that folder is already in the spot that you want it to be. So we're just going to hit add. Don't suspect, don't import suspected duplicates. You can have that tagged or not. It doesn't make any difference because this is so fresh. You really don't need to do anything and hit import. And Lightroom is going to take care of the rest for you. And it's going to import all of these with the folder structure that whatever folders you've put in there. Now, here's the weird thing. You're probably never going to use these folders again, but you may or may not. Go ahead and close up the moving van and see that it's in there. You also want to make sure that you're showing in library. You want to show folders and subfolders. And there, there's all the images that you had in there. Now, think of it this way. Leave everything in the moving van until you're ready to unpack it. Now, we can start unpacking images now if you know that you're going to use them. Here's the cool part and how you unpack them. Click on All Images Go Here. And the only folder, main folder, you should have in there besides anything that's inside the moving van. Come up to Metadata and hit Metadata. And this is the great fun part about doing things this way is that on the left, if you want to do this by date, on the left, everything you put in there is going to be separated out by date. 2020, 2019, not only is it separated out by date, you haven't even done anything yet. Lightroom's already done all this for you. 2018 October. It's not only October it's separated into, but it's also the day and date. And you didn't have to do anything. We've just put the images in there. Now what we're going to do is the easy part. Basically, if you click on each one of these, let's say 2019 and you want to bring some of these images they're already in Lightroom but if you want to permanently bring them into Lightroom right because the moving van is only temporary 
It may be a year before you get rid of the moving van. You may keep it around forever. But the idea is, here is the idea, is that you're only going to use over the next year or the next two years, you're only going to use so many images out of that moving van. It's kind of like, you know, when you move into a new house and you've got all this furniture sitting out in the moving van and you go, God, why did we pack all that? And then you got to go put it in storage. Well, after a certain amount of time, you're going to go, you know, I just don't need all those images that are in the moving van. I'll take and make a copy of those and I'll show you how to do that at the very end. And I'll put those away someplace and I'll leave those and make a backup copy. We're always making backup copies. The moving van. 2019. So this is going to give you an example of how you can do this. You right click on images, go here, dummy. And create folder inside all Lightroom images, go here, dummy. That's what we want to do. Now we clicked on 2019 and we're going to call this 2019. This is simple, 2019 images. And we're going to decide, do we want to include selected photos or not? Well, for this, the only thing that we have selected right now is one image. And it's always going to try to select the one images. But we'll go ahead and do it that way. 2019, and there's the one image. But let's say you want to add more in there. Just go back up and go to the moving van. Hit metadata. In 2019, here's all the rest of the images. Let's say we want to take all of these images right here out of the moving van, right? So we highlighted those. We just drag them in to 2019 and move them there. And Lightroom takes care of the rest. It moves them all for you. Now, you can just keep doing this. Say all of a sudden now you want the images from 2016. And you know ahead of time you're going to want these yellow trees. And we're going to bring these down, these yellow trees. Just simply highlight them. Right click on images go here because that's the main file that we want to put them in. We want to create this in there. And this is 2016 images. And we want to use the selected yellow trees and bring those into the main part of Lightroom. So here we go. Inside of all images go here, we've got 2016 images now, which we've decided we wanted to use those. We've got 2019. Now let's say you go to 2019, you go, you know what, I'm never going to use this flag. Just take and put it back in the moving van. Just think of it as storage. I generally don't delete anything. I keep pretty much anything. Now, let's just do this one more time. We'll bring down something else. We're going to go up into the moving van. And let's say I want to create a folder. Who knows? Um, I want to move these old time images down. I'm going to make a, a project. Right. So in all images, go here, dummy. We're going to create a folder inside of uh, that. And we're going to say old time images. Now, this is a project for me. That's what I call it. Old time images project. And that's not the one we want. So we'll just take it and put it back in the moving van. We'll go back up to metadata. And all dates inside of, and we'll select the old time images, just drag them and drop them and put them in there. Now, as you can see, as we do this, the moving van gets smaller and smaller and smaller all the time. So there's our old time images. Now we, for me personally, I may do a project. And when I'm done with them, I'll either put them back in the moving van or I'll just put them in a year. So it would be 1940s or something like that. Anyway, I think you get the idea. And the idea is to slowly, maybe over the next year or two years or however long, 
to start moving those images slowly out of the moving van. I know that if you're listening to this and you're just getting started in Lightroom, this could be a little confusing. Or if you've been using Lightroom for a while, you may be going, okay, this is too much. It's really not that much. But what I need to do right now is kind of explain a little bit of theory with myself on how you find things. As you bring images down out of the van, right? So you've taken all these images all over the place. As you bring them down, you want to keyword them. And that's how you're going to find the images. That's why you don't need to divide them up into birthdays or locations or travel or um, whatever. Even simple things like invoice. If you keyword a group of images with an invoice, let's say an invoice number, invoice 0123, you're always going to be able to go find it. And that's kind of the easy part. And I'll show you that in one second. There is one caveat to this though. All right. Remember, I said before that if you, let me get me off of here. If you go up in here to catalog settings, you want to make sure that you check this. Now you notice that it's not checked automatically write changes to XMP. And there's a reason why you want to do this. You want that information, the keywords, to go directly onto the image while you're using Lightroom. And the reason I say this is because if you're, besides a PSD file, um, you can easily look up images. Now you can do it with PSD, but you got to do it a little bit differently. But let's get, get me back on here. You, all you have to do is search an individual folder outside of Lightroom, and it's going to be able to search for those tags on there. But if you don't tell Lightroom to put it into XMP, to put it into the file, it's not going to do it right away. And sometimes as you turn off Lightroom, it'll say, hey, I'm not done writing XMP file uh, information to that. I'll do it at a later date. And you can either go yes or no. But anyway, that's uh, part of the theory there. I just wanted to let you know. So let's jump back into this and I'll show you exactly how easy this works. Remember, we were in metadata. Now, Lightroom already separated everything out into dates. The great thing about it is if you come up here and you select keywords, right? Look at all the keywords that are in here that you can search by. I mean, this is, it's amazing if you've never used this. So you just hit command or control F and it'll drop down. Um, if you hit command or control F, it'll just give you a search over here. You can search all but the easiest thing to do is, if you want, you can narrow it down to, let's say, 2016, right? And if you can imagine this on a much larger scale, right? Now I have it separated out in names. There's Bob Young. And now I just found all of Bob Young. Or you can simply go, come back up here, go to None. Go Control F and go Bob, and there you have all those images. So basically, that's something that is part of this process. So by just having the dates on the left-hand column, you can use the keywords to go out and search your images. Makes it really, really easy. You can search even inside of the moving van when you want to bring them down. So even if you have 200,000 images, you're going to be able to bring, bring them down in or search for them eventually. And that is the concept. I always give everything three keywords. Person, place, and thing are the things I concentrate on or whatever I need to look up those images. And I'll cover this in the longer uh, version of this. Now, here is, let me get me off of here again. So you're all done 
And after a year or two of bringing images down from the moving van, you still have a bunch of images left there. And you're going, you know what? I'm never, ever going to use these. This is what you do. Take these images and the moving van, right click it, and say export folder as a catalog. So what you're going to do is export this moving van, maybe a year down the road, or maybe you figure out you want to do this right away. I mean, you could spend a couple glasses of wine and be done with this whole thing moving out of the moving van. And you're just going to export as a catalog. Name the catalog and export the whole thing as a catalog. Now, hard drives are pretty, they're pretty cheap these days. So if you don't have a ton of space, um, you can just export onto the other external uh, hard drive that you used from before that was your backup. Anyway, I hope that this has covered enough to get you started on reorganizing or an easy way to reorganize. Now, the whole concept of the moving van doesn't have to be strictly like this. But if you're just starting out, it's a great way to get all your images, herd all your images into one folder and then get a backup of that folder and start fresh in Lightroom. Okay, you may not be going to use everything that I just said, but hopefully there are some pieces of that that you can use. And once again, the basic concept is, is to create a copy of all your images into one single folder Copy that folder and start using it in Lightroom as the moving van. Unpack the moving van as you need to use the images. And you'll find out that after a long period of time, there's a bunch of images in there you don't need. Export, export all of those images as a catalog. And at a later date, if you want to get images out of that, what exported as the moving van, you just open that up and export those images and then import them into Lightroom. So it allows you to kind of filter out over time those images out of the moving van. Anyway, like I said, I'm going to do a much longer version and I may have to divide it up into a couple of spaces, but from going out and taking an image all the way to printing on Q image. And once again, there may be still a discount down there if you use that code for Q image. Um, but anyway, please uh, go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell, all those things. I really hope that this either opens up some discussion with comments below or you can use parts of this to kind of help get yourself restarted or started in the beginning. Remember, the big thing is, is you only got to dump three keywords onto each image as you import it. That's pretty much all you need to do or I've found that I need to do to go back and find the image. Anyway, um, my name is Rusty Nelson, and like I always say, my camera is my best excuse for adventure. I hope you gain something from this, and until next time, go get your camera out there and start clicking.